I'm a mosaic, but not on the floor. Gems and stones and so much more. Pieced together with precision so fine, what am I so neatly entwined? Hey guys, welcome back to another unboxing. We have a special guest here today, Tom. He's an in-house gemologist, a gem enthusiast. He's been on the channel before and he always brings us interesting things to look at and learn about. And we're excited to have him on today. I'm excited to be here. Oh, cool. Okay, so we have a massive piece of malachite. Look at the banding, that's so pretty. And then, an intarsia. Look at that. We have malachite like as the base and actually the back is amazing. This has been a, a long obsession for me. This is made by a renowned artist, Jim Kaufman. These were made probably 30 to 35 years ago. Oh, cool. And Jim Kaufman is not making anymore. He's completely retired. They're one of a kind, all unique, and they're really irreplaceable. These have been hidden away in a vault for huh. about 30 years. All gemstones in their own right are works of art, but this is a work of art in a completely different dimension. 100%. This is an assembled work of art. So the great thing about Jim was he was a mineralogist more than anything. So intarsia really is the alternating use of textures, colors, patterns. Huh. The banded green is malachite, yes. of course. The purple is sudolite. Yes. The white is pristine. Yes. Pristine is just white chalcedony. This material with the play of color, the colorful material is opal. Australian. Australian. It's uh, crystal or white opal. White. And then black onyx, the yes. triangular elements. It's like a, a really cool shield shape. Yes, and the great thing that you'll notice, each one is signed and numbered. I saw that when I turned it over. If that's oriented right side up, when you just flip it over, that's how the artist interpreted that piece to be worn. So it's this way. Yep. So we have a piece of intarsia, a piece of rough. What are we getting into today? And we're gonna talk about both pieces because he used really unique material. And it's not like he used tailings or scraps. He used high quality material. Mm -hmm. And malachite is a copper carbonate. It gets its famous green color from copper. It has a rich history of ornamental use. It's known for this banding for the botryoidal structure, especially on the back here. You can see these curves. It essentially is a growth formation whereby the crystal is radiating outwards and it creates this bulbous kind of effect. So we're gonna see a lot of really good stuff here. I love it. Okay, we've got another box. Oh, look at that purple. It has a lot of rock. So we have another intarsia and a piece of sudolite. Yes. Where did we get this? This is extremely no, rare know. <laughs> and a highly sought after mineral. Sudolite is known for that vibrant purple color. It gets that color from manganese. So you'll find sudolite in manganese rich rocks as you have here. It's definitely embedded into the matrix there. It's highly sought after at this point in the market. Yeah, I'm just, I am blown away by this piece. You would think it's dyed. Yeah. In this one, you kind of have sudolite as the base, mm -hmm. and then it looks like that Australian opal. Is that lapis or azurite? It looks like that is a piece of azurmalachite in the center. Wow, that's such like a clean piece. Yeah. That's one of the most fascinating things to me is when do you make that decision to cut a specimen? Yeah. Because a People lot- People differ in their opinions on Very, that. very different, and these are Precious works of art. If you break one of these, you can't even repair it. Yeah. You can't glue it back yeah. together. That line will always be seen. I'm gonna put it down. <laughs> and these, <laughs> I, well, I've broken one. It, it broke my heart when I did. It was it was a sujolite one, I believe. They're really light in your hands. Yes. But That's they have what makes size. It so scary. Like they, they really are statement pieces. So can we talk about how they're made? Yeah. Basically, what'll happen is once the ideas in their mind and they start cutting, they put it on like a tacky substance so it sits out. And then what'll happen is they have the flat base and then they start gluing on top of it. Okay. And it's almost like building a puzzle. Do you inlay it? Is there a, an opening in the sujolite where that you then put? Yes. One of the things that is most important to me when looking at this stuff is when you run your finger over the top of it, there's no catch, no. there's no snag. No. This is all flush. The way he cut everything is just it layers right inside. Yeah. It's almost like a nesting doll. Oh, that is wild. Are we ready to look at the next one? I think so. All right. 
All that right. Might. I love it. Ooh, opal is one of my favorite gemstones. This is technically a Yawa nut. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, look at the color. Okay, so I'm looking at the back to see the orientation. So the tip of the triangle is at the top here. Yes. The base is black onyx, and then what looks like turquoise. Okay, some more pristine. And then it looks like, what is that, fire agate? Yes, fire agate normally has that botroidal iridescence yeah. with it. He had some that almost had like a sunburst inside of it. It was unlike any that I'd ever seen. One thing that immediately caught my eye with this piece is the use of opal with different play of color in two different spots. In the exterior, the triangular portion, we primarily see yellows and blues with some flashes of red, but it's a little bit more of a pinfire-ish yeah. pattern. In the center section, that red play of color is so vibrant and yeah. so prominent and it's more of a broader stroke type of pattern. That's where the money's at, Yeah, is in the reds. When you cut opals, you know, that play of color is a result of very, very, very thin layers. So when you're talking about things that are being stacked on top of other materials, it's really important that you get that thickness yeah. correct. You have to be really precise to make sure that the play of color and the pattern that you want maintains intact. But that's kind of how you win multiple AGTA Spectrum Awards. <laughs> by doing this kind of material. You also, there's a little bit of sujolite in there, a real thin layer oh, of yes. sujolite. And we'll make sure to put the links to all of these in the description below. So go check those out. All of these are for sale. If you like one, get one, because you never know if you're gonna have a chance again. Yeah. All right, you ready for another box? I am. I'm always excited. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. <laughs> the first thing I thought of here was Mickey Mouse. It's like the little ears. I really like the shape of this one. So again, you've got malachite, sujolite, pristine, opal, and then the blue botryoidal material, which I'm guessing is this. Yeah. You know, I don't often see azurite without malachite. No, it's pretty rare to not, and when you do see it, like the crystal that's in your hand. And it's the luster is incredible. Very much so. Azurite is a copper carbonate with hydroxide, is known for this really vibrant blue. In the intarsia, it has this, like a... It's like a blueberry Like color. a blue, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about the history of intarsia, because this technique has actually been around for quite some time. Yes. Originally a woodworking technique. Yeah, woodworking techniques, you'll see a lot of stuff. Actually, they used to use bone. One of the qualifications that I look for when I'm buying gems and minerals is what will uh, my kids and my grandkids and their kids think of the stones that I buy? And I love that in these pieces generally, you have the signature, yep. you have the number, you have so many different elements to it that tell the story. That's the one thing that always stuck with me. I talked to a designer and I was talking about selling something and she told me, we don't own anything, we just take care of it for the next person. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I love you. Like that <laughs> just, it, it really hit me as a collector yeah. that I just own it for now. Yeah, I love that. I'm gonna have a favorites pile here in a I second. Oh. oh, love a good neutral. I'm all for the colors. But this one, this one just pops in a yeah. really unique way. You would think that was an old Polaroid. That's the exact same reaction I have because we can even see it with a rough material. It's called Picture Jasper for a reason. You're in a cave, yeah. looking out onto the desert, taking shelter from a storm, the hot heat of the desert. And he did the same thing with that picture. That looks like the cover of an old Western book. It does. So the signature is different. <laughs> Do you know anything about a, a that? A little bit. I think that once he probably started getting into the softer materials, it was a lot easier to do that machine etch. It's probably one that's almost like auto pen. Yeah. And I think with something like this, these are probably earlier materials that he was working on, but you can see that he did that by hand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes that even more interesting yeah. to me. And I love all of the semi-precious with the opals and agates and play of colors and all the textures, but something like this, it's so subtle 
yet strikingly beautiful. That looks like a classic painting. It's so cool. Let's talk about Picture Jasper. Yes. The type of chalcedony, mm -hmm. and it basically forms in mud sediments. Mm -hmm. And so you have different minerals in the mud that rise to the surface, and the way that they settle and the different materials in the mud dictate the picture. Agates, chalcedonies, they don't get their due. And when you see things like this, it really just solidifies that they have a place in jewelry and gems. Yeah. It really is just a beautiful piece. We're keeping them coming. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, cool. That's a unique shape. And that's a unique specimen. So when we first pulled this out, I was really confused. I didn't know what this was. I'm not like a mineral person. But right when I saw that conchoidal fracture right there, that's when I knew, okay, this is onyx. So I'm gonna wager a guess and say onyx is the base of yes. this one. So it looks like this is the correct orientation. So you've got the pristine. Yes. You have a smaller layer of malachite. You have what looks like lapis, opal, and azure malachite. Yes. So one of my favorite things about opal in general is fluorescence. I like fluorescence in all kinds of things. And all of these do phosphoresce. They are Ooh. true Australian crystal opals. They will phosphoresce. That's one of the best ways that you can tell natural opal from a synthetic opal. Do you want to try to show the phosphorescence? Can we do it? Yeah, we can. Okay, let's test it in these lighting conditions. And if we can't see it, we may need to turn the lights down more. So we want to look at this triangle, the trapezoid and the triangle. Oh, there we go. Yeah, and you can still see that it's glowing a little bit here. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I might have you pick that one up. Okay. <laughs> that is lapis. Yeah. Look at this. Well, I love this one. That's really unique. Yeah, it's very unique. like you're unique. looking into a house. It, it solidifies what we'd said about textures. You have the vertical banding of the malachite, the different play of color in the opals, the diagonal lines of the lapis and the turquoise, and then that wonderful piece of azurite on the side. It's one of the only primarily blue and green, but then that makes the red in the opal pop. Yeah. That's gotta be one of my favorites. So one of the interesting things about this piece is it's got three different blues in it. So you have the lapis that's going around and then you have the azurite right here on the side. And then you also have ceruleite. Ceruleite is a rare material and you don't see it often. It's a rare copper aluminum phosphate. It's really porous actually. It's known for this sky blue color. So cerulean blue, that's where that gets its name. One thing that we haven't talked about is most of these are like sealed. Correct? Yeah, I believe that they have a seal over them, like a light, a light coating of a seal, almost like a lacquer. Mm -hmm, because a lot of these materials are porous. It is important to coat it with something to make sure that it kind of seals. But I want to show you this piece. Actually, I'm going to let you open it. Okay. So you can Ooh, see. Oh, I'm excited. This one is one that isn't for sale, but if someone were interested in buying it, reach out. Anything's can, for sale. So anything well. is for sale. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, it's heavy. Very heavy. As you can see with this on the back, that's a 14 karat gold hinge, 14 karat gold stop. The latch is 14 karat gold. The lapis with all kinds of pyrite flaking in it. Yeah. The malachite of different textures that goes all the way around. And then the inside of it that you said it was so heavy is granite. It's so, so pretty. Yeah, everything about this is high, fine quality material. It's a trinket box. It's wonderful. It would look amazing on anyone's end table. Oh, that's beautiful. On the back, it says Kaufman 1994. So it's 30 years old. Yeah. I think it's time to take a closer look. There's so many things to love and appreciate about these pieces. I already know my favorite. Let's let our guests go first. It's the picture, Jasper. So I'm a colored gemstone person, but there's something about this piece that it tells a story, picture uh, Jasper. Okay, that is kind of my favorite piece too. I already but picked it. But for the sake of variety, I'm gonna choose this one. Again, I love that everything is in the blue, the green family. There's just such dimension, such texture and depth there. So take a closer look.
If you guys want to see more of Tom and all of his gem love, go follow him on Instagram. We'll put a link to his Instagram in the description below. And as a reminder, all of these Intarsia pieces are for sale, so go to the links in the description to check more of those out. Let us know in the comments which one is your favorite. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching.